I actually taught one class once on video. She said, you talked for one hour straight, not a single mistake. We don't have to edit it. <laughs> and I did one class for one hour without having to stop, talk, or take a break. That gone, Sarah. This is a Rocky Patel, by the way. I love this Rocky Patel. I love the flavor. But I need a lighter on me all the time because it shuts off quick. The draw is really good. It's got a nice draw, but I don't know why it shuts off so much with it, it goes through. Um, anybody got any questions? What do you want to talk about? Ask me a question. I mean, if I don't know the answer, so I don't know the answer. To that, I'll be honest. Um, but, you know, what would you like to talk about? What What are some of the challenges you're facing um, that you're needing help with? I'm willing to do a consultation. Uh, I'm doing a Mondays, every Monday on a Zoom. This is not on a Zoom. This is a lot easier to do it through this platform from a laptop from anywhere um, where I'm not doing a Zoom, but I'll be doing a Zoom. And if you want to um, come on the air and join me on a Zoom call, if you want a free consultation, um, if you call me later and says, bro, I'm going to message you because I want to pick your brain. Dude, it's $159 an hour to pick my brain. Um, if you want a, a private consultation. But you're going to know more than what you want to know and more than you can handle in one hour uh, about strategy. Look, I did sales since the age of 16 i was in corporate sales wholesale manufacturing i had my own wholesale business i sold contracts that had no i didn't sell a product i sold a contract <laughs> for for subcontracting basically i hired subcontractors around the country uh to install glass uh when i used to work for a manufacturer there isn't anything i haven't sold um I, I, I can teach you how to sell. Most people just despise sales. I'm, I'm selling a job, a BRB. Explain BRB. What What is a BRB? I don't want to misunderstand it. Um, uh, it doesn't tell me who it is um, that's doing it. Uh, finding capital or funding to start a business. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. Um, you know, it... it, it, it it's, it's hard. Sales hard for a lot of people because you have to learn sales. My advice to you guys is, hey, get good sales training. Buy sales training. Buy. The problem is how do you determine who's good sales training? I mean, if you want to learn to do door-to-door -door sales, then go look at the door-to-door -door sales companies offering the training. I mean, um, OBEX has some really good contacts in this industry about door-to-door -door sales. Um, I, I just lost my train of thought on this guy's name that does really good door-to-door -door sales training. Um, take the course. Um, take a good sales course. Learn sales. Then if, if you want to learn about marketing, learn about marketing so that you can hire somebody to do the marketing. But understand that uh, this is one of the reasons why after all these years, I decided four years ago I'm going to do in-house marketing agency. People call me, hey, I want you to do my SEO. I don't do SEO for anybody. I do it for myself. I have three brands that I manage internally. I got Pest Geek Podcast. I got Nature Pest. Right now, we're built. I'm going to build out a separate brand. Uh, we've got the Academy. That is enough to keep my myself busy with an in-house marketing agency where we learn how to do it. We're learning how to do ads now. We're learning how to do different things um, to promote our brands and our products. I, I want to do it for us. I don't want to do it for other people. Uh, most people will not be able to afford it to do it right. And this is why you get taken for a ride every single time where somebody says they can do SEO for you for $2.99 a month. They can't. They can take your money for $2.99 a month and let it sit there and they'll do nothing for it for $699 a month. I mean, the amount of SEO we do and the amount of social media marketing we do is the equivalent of about $12,000 a month if I was an agency. Whole March started out at $10,000 a month if you wanted them. I don't know how much they are now. Um, they wouldn't take you for less than $10,000 a month. Those are the really good, legit SEO companies. SEO should be about 20% of your marketing budget. So if you're, if you're spending $10,000 a month on SEO you should be able to spend around 100 to 140,000 a month marketing. That's kind of where it's at uh, in, in, in the reality of things. Um, 
you know, we do the equivalent of that, but our ROI, our cost is about a third of that. Um, you know, what we spend in-house to do all our marketing in-house to get it done. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I can answer for you. If anybody's out there, there's a couple of people online. I don't know how many of us. I'm not on TikTok because I need 10,000 followers on TikTok right now to do a live from this app. I can do it a live from the phone. I should have done it uh, from the phone, but I don't feel like screaming really loud and the, the music's here and it's blaring and you know, I'm a cigar place and empty right now because nobody's smoking a cigar at three o'clock in the afternoon. Only I'm doing that. I got to keep an eye on my phone because when, when honey calls, I got to fly and uh, she hasn't called me yet. So, you know, that's how it is, bro. Um, you know, I got to, I got to just let her do her thing and I do my thing and, you know, we get together and do our things. Um, but I don't know. Does anybody finding a, be right back. Uh, can hear you. Great. All right. Well, you know, it's been a good hour. Been hanging out with you guys. Um, you know, if you want to reach out to me, by the way, you know, you got, I got the Academy, the Pest Geek Academy, go to pestgeekpodcast.com. Um, go ahead and, um, log on and you know, check out our courses that we have. I'm, I'm putting, I got a free technician course. Look, why, why am I giving a free technician course away for new hires? Because when you have to make your first hire, that is about the most painful thing that you ever have to go through is making your first hires. And I want you to succeed and I want you to have it easy or easier so I can give that away. That's by the way, that was my baby course. That was the one I created first. Um, my marketing courses, once you can afford to do marketing, yeah, pay for it. I appreciate it if you would pay for my courses. If you want to know how to do my eco-friendly services, I'm starting to put them all online now. There's one, our road service, how we do it. Look, you, no prep. You don't need to tell the customer they need to prep with our service, with our eco-friendly service. They can stay in the home uh, when they're there. Uh, Justin Ortiz. Okay, I got a lead. I need an exterminator. How possible mosquito fleas in the house? Okay. So I just got a lead while I was sitting here. Um, on my website, by the way, they just wrote me a form and then I get it on my Insta, on my WhatsApp. It goes directly to my WhatsApp. I can get it there. Um, what was I talking about? That's my train of thought. I need to log this, but I don't want to walk away. Um, yeah. I mean, what do you want to talk about? Remind me what I was talking about. If somebody's listening. Sometimes I lose my train of thought. Bro, I'm 53 years old. Um, you know, uh, I'm not exactly a spring chicken. Um, but I don't know if I can get. Let me let me take a look. If you guys are on Facebook, let me let me take a look at my Facebook here. Um, see if anybody's asking any questions because I can see it on my screen here from all the the platforms, but I don't know. Uh, likes your live video. What's up, Dwayne Epps? I hope Epps, E-P-P-S, you're watching me uh, on, on our Pest Geek podcast. And, um, yeah, I don't know if anybody else is watching on Pest Geek podcast. Most of you guys are out at this time still doing services, still doing a lot of things. Um, you're not here. I do it at 8 o'clock in the morning um, on Mondays. I'm going to be doing uh, a couple of lives on a couple of private groups that have asked me to do stuff for them, uh, for their group. Um, a, a bunch of do-it-yourself groups. I'm going to be teaching on a bunch of do-it-yourself groups. I'm trying to impact people's lives. Uh, you know, you got a mom who's in an apartment. She's a single mom. Um, whatever the situation is, it doesn't matter to me. I don't judge it. And she can't afford to buy pest control because it's three, dollars $400. The slumlord doesn't pay for it. What do I lose? She's never going to be able to hire you or hire me. She's going to be fogging the place, putting all kinds of chemicals, taking ortho, uh, fire ant, you know, um, which is, you know, an organophosphate, putting it all over the house because she read it on some stupid blog. You know, so be the good you want to see in the world. If you're saying that people are giving bad advice, well, why aren't you writing a blog giving good advice? Why aren't this is my this has always been my premise. I get criticized for it, but I don't care because, again, what are you going to do for that mom? You're going to do it for free for her? 
if you are fine it doesn't it's no skin off your back either if i give away but if i show her a video on how to do it correctly she's still gonna have to spend a hundred and some dollars on the product now she can afford to maintain it do it right not kill her kids not contaminate it do it in an eco-friendly way do an ipm program because that's my that's what i've been doing i got 700 videos on my nature pest channel where we teach people how we do it it's no skin off your back what does it matter you know go ahead and and, and do it so i'm doing a lot of that um we're going into a lot of these groups uh they you know so teaching their people their users um how to do it correctly because there's a lot of bad information out there um karen's came out in force that's when i went making videos and sharing links there you go just do your own thing brother you know um you know the karen's are going to come out there's nothing you can do about that look i i i don't hear it if i listen to every single negative comment that i got on all of my channels that i'm on i would never get anything done i can't care i i just i'm deaf to it um you don't like what i have to say don't follow me you like what i have to say like and share it I don't know what to tell you. I can't, I don't care. Um, so I will do my thing and I will give my best advice. And if you jump down my throat because you didn't like it, that says more about you than it says about me. I, I could care less. Um, you got, you, you got to really build a tough skin um, to do this. Um, because if you're afraid of criticism, you won't put out content. If you're afraid about telling people, building a channel, going on YouTube, going on Facebook, giving advice, being the most knowledgeable person, being an expert, you cannot care what the naysayers are going to say. You cannot care what your competition is going to say. Your competition is never going to be around to pay your bills when you go bankrupt. As a matter of fact, they're I've had my, they, they tried to attack my site and my Facebook pages this week, and I'm getting bad reviews from a guy who's never done a review, shows up, no picture, nothing, gives me a three-star. That's my competition. My competition went in on my GMB and tried to change my hours and, and requested a, a change. And if they do that and you accept it, but then it triggers a manual review and then it could close down your GMB. That's what they're banking on. This is the reality, bro. Um, you know, uh, uh, of where the, 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 the place we live in where so many people are so unhappy with their own life that they got to crap all over everybody else's life because they can't, you know, if, you know, if you can't get it up, you can't get it up. I mean, why are you, uh, why are you pissed off at the guy who can't, um, you know, work on your own problem, but that's just the society we live in. It is much easier to crap on somebody else than go out and be successful and you can't care. And if you do, and you care so much about what everybody thinks, you'll never get anything done. You'll never get anything done at work because everybody shoots you down. You can't care that everybody shoots you down. You got to put your ideas out there. Um, so this is what has to be done. Keep an eye on this phone because I don't want her to call me. And she's at the doctor getting a procedure done. And when she's done, I wasn't going to wait around in an office for five hours for no reason. Um, but make sure. It's still at 246. And that was about three hours. So, yeah, 646. I got about another hour. Hold on a second. I, while you guys are still on and you guys probably riding around in your truck, you put me on the mount. Nobody's paying attention. I've got these people on all over the place. Nobody's listening to anything. Let me go light this cigar again, and I'm going to try to keep it on this time. Hold on. So, I don't know, folks. Uh, let's see here. See you on Monday, man. Put it on the calendar so I don't forget it. Yeah, every Monday I'm on 8 a.m. Uh, doing a live. I'm going to be doing some training. Uh, I'm going to be doing some classes on a lot of things that I see a need in. I, I usually look for the need that nobody wants to address, the things nobody wants to talk about, the things nobody want to share. Um, that's it. That's it. Uh, Juan, uh, more info on getting leads. Yeah, man, that's the toughest thing. I mean, uh, John um, Torres, um, is, it, is it really John that your parents, or is it Juan, and then you just change it to, to John because, you know, but it's still the Torres at the end, so... It's like Frank Hernandez. You know, I'm Franklin. I'm not Francisco, but I'm Franklin. Um, but, yeah, man, getting leads is the hardest thing. This is why most businesses fold um, because the most expensive thing in business is getting enough leads 
that create enough sales that create enough cash flow for you to keep going. And basically that marketing is a machine that you got to keep feeding. It's an animal. You have to keep feeding it for it to keep producing. When you stop, it stops. And then trying to get that momentum back again is where it's hard. What I see is when, when things are so like right now, things are incredibly slow for us. I have to admit, and, and the market is slowing down and customers are canceling. I am investing way more in SEO and in pages and in page building because I know that six months down the line, it'll start paying me back. When everybody is slowing that and nobody wants to invest in SEO, I've already done the investment, so I'm ahead. It's kind of like buying stock. When do you want to buy stock when the market is down? People are like, I'm not going to buy now because the market now is when you buy. You buy when things are cheap. Okay, so you don't buy it when things are up here, because what are the chances of it going higher? You're banking on that. So uh, leads is the hardest thing to get. Jonathan Torres. Okay, Jonathan, there you go. All right. So see, the truth comes out, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, man, that's how that's how you do it. I'm going to need another coffee because I don't drink this early in the day, when especially when I have to drive. Um, so I'm having uh, a coffee. I had a. Uh, uh, she did a cappuccino or a latte. I don't know what she did. And I had a Cuban sandwich. They got a little Cuban sandwich shop next door, and then they bring them in, and you can have a Cuban sandwich here, and, it, and it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. But, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, if anybody's got any questions, let me go on here. Um, and no, can you come out? No, he's not home um, at this time. Uh, my kid's friend. Uh, see, we're on here. Let me go. Let me go to my my page. Ah, back over here. Um, I'm live. I'm live. I know I'm live. All right, I got. Yeah. Let me take a look at this. I I haven't seen all the comments. I'm gonna, let me ask, man. Uh, do you do you have an exit plan? Yeah, bro. It's called. Hey, Chad, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, it's called the body bag. No, my exit plan is to get it to about two point five million, two million, and sell it. Um, but I'm building two other brands now that I'm working on um, for service businesses um, in um, in the same arena, doing different services but under different brand. Um, that's what I'm doing. Hey, Gustavo, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Christopher, you're back. Yeah, bro. I'm like, the, I'm like the, the, that, you know, that work that doesn't go away. Um, Jamie Hannon, he knows what he's talking about. He's got a big ass company in, um, in Port San Lucy, uh, reinvest in their biz. Uh, see it every day. Let's start with a nice clean truck. Yeah, buddy. I agree. Uh, let's see here. Aaron, uh, be right back. Aaron Vito sold it. You sold the business? Uh, commenting on advice because the Karen's. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I see your videos, dog. You put out some pretty cool videos. They're funny. I was one the other day uh, on what you were doing. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't go where you're not invited. And you don't stick your nose into some. That's why I built my own platform. Um, check out Solid Blend Cigar Lounge. Uh, check them out. Uh, like cigars in Miami. But I can't speak about the branding. Okay. Um, yeah, I go to a lot of cigar bars. Anywhere I go, I try to find me a cigar lounge to sit in and relax, talk to the owner, make some friends. You know, um, I got it. By the way, I got a new podcast coming out. Um, we're going to be devoting it to the entire service industry. Uh, so whatever service industry you're in, um, it doesn't matter if it's window cleaning, uh, mowing. AC, plumbing, if you've got a service business, I'm creating a big network uh, down in Miami uh, in the South Florida area uh, for that. And I got a new podcast coming out, the, the Service Geek podcast. Uh, that is, we're going to be focusing on all others, uh, service industry uh, people. Uh, and I've been, look, my first, I've always been in service industry. I've never liked um, retail. I've never liked, I've always been in service industries. And what I did was I, I started out first job I think I ever had was installing tile. Um, it's like 16 years old. I, I, then I worked as building signs, uh, electric boxes. I, I knew electrical and how to install them 
by the time I was already like 17, um, I could install those signs and, and do it. I mean, I worked in, I had my first landscape business around that same time. Um, I've always wanted to start up. I was always like, I'm like, I was the guy that today would, would be like a Gen Zer where every six months he had a new job because he was trying different things, trying to figure things out with my ADD and ADHD. And then I did all that for several years. And about 19, I, I was already in college, went and graduated in IT. I was in charge of IT for, you know, all of South Florida from West Palm down to almost the Keys um, for a company that had first all over that area and I did that then I went into sales um, and I spent 35 years in sales and service industries selling decks siding windows um, you name it and then I had my own landscaping business again later I had a pool service company I had a fence repair company I had a painting business all of these businesses I've had um, so when I know service businesses I know them I found pest control to be the most proper thing I enjoyed the most I spent 17 years in that, uh, but 53 years old, I'm not a spring chicken, you know, um, it isn't nothing new. So yeah, that's, that's where, that's where we're at right now is, um, and I love teaching and I love training, which is really where I excel. Um, I'm, I don't think of myself as a true entrepreneur. Um, I, I'm a micro business owner that does okay. Um, I'm happy that I, that I, I still have the. Uh, I, I don't see myself as a guru. Um, I just know what works and what doesn't work. And a, a lot of things that people are doing that are struggling, mostly the one-man shows, is everybody's got to pay their dues. It, it's a doggy, dog eat dog world when it comes to business. Nobody's going to hand it to you. Um, and a lot of people who are technical people who are mostly introverted, um, they're not extroverted. They're not social butterflies. Have a really hard time. And and I had a mom who, after taking care of me until I was 17 because I had cancer, figured out she couldn't go back into the workforce after 17 years uh, of being out of the workforce for like seven, eight years. She was already in her late 40s. What was she going to go back to? A minimum wage job? She started cleaning houses. And she was a solo person cleaning houses until she was like 70. You know, I don't kind of want for a lot of people. I mean, my mom didn't have the business sense to hire people and she just cleaned houses. She understood herself. When I understood what she was selling this for, I said, mom, you're, 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 you're killing yourself. These people have money. They're willing to pay more. You're not charging enough. This is what I see constantly with self-employed people is they undersell themselves. I say about 80 to 90% of the people out there doing solo work in every category is underselling their service. This is the trend. It's only the, the 3 to 4% that you hear bragging about how much. They, so I've always made more money because I always oversold it. But I'm confident as a salesperson that I can bring a USP where I can ask for more than what most people are willing to pay for the same service because I bring a USP because I had a, a brand because people understood what I do. Um, but most people I know are, if you price out the top 10 competitors in your market, in your area, you figure out you're either under them, and that's not a good place to be for a solo operator. You need to be above that. I would say price yourself 5 to 10% above. It, take the average in the market. Go, go call 10, 15, 20 companies. What you're going to find out is most of them don't answer their phone. If you're answering your phone, you already have an advantage. And you you will go ahead and price them out, put it on a spreadsheet, on an Excel spreadsheet, take the average on the initial, take the average, remove the outliers. The outliers are the guys charging 65 bucks for an initial and take the guy that's charging 400 and look at the average. You figure what the average price is. Then you take the monthly, the quarterly, the bi, the, the bi monthly quarterly, figure out what the average is. Take that average and price yourself 10 percent above average. That's a pricing strategy. Like, what do you what do you guys sell it for? I, I see it in groups. It doesn't matter what I sell it for in, in Miami because you're in Arkansas or you're in Tennessee or you're in Alabama. It won't matter because you got to sell it according to what the market's willing to bear. 
the market is only willing to bear so much above what everybody else, because if they're calling around for pricing and you're the single most expensive guy, you better have a good reason why you're the single most expensive guy. You can't just say, because the biggest mistake I see is you're buying me. I have 25 years of experience. Okay, what's going to happen when you have your first technician with six months of experience? Now what? You can't sell that because now you lost your USP. The only USP you had was you're buying me. So basically, as long as I'm alive and breathing, you will continue to pay me. And the day I can't, you will stop. And you'll find somebody else that's another individual owner. Um, and that's so what you got to do is you got to brand your company and your USP and your sales to the fact that they're buying a higher quality service from a local company versus buying it from a national brand. You know, do you want 49 cent hamburgers at McDonald's or do you want to buy a five guys burger? By the time you get the fries and the drink, it's $27. You're paying for the quality. How do you demonstrate the quality? Well, when you're using Bifen and spraying the outside of a house with the same thing, when they ask you, well, what are you going to spray on the outside? Now, what do you tell them? Well, we're spraying this product. Well, so is the other company. If all you're doing is spraying, then where is the USP? Where's the advantage? you got to have something that you can explain of justify why that service. And this is where you're, you don't understand marketing and branding. And it's very hard for you that because you're thinking it's my experience everything you have to sell is your experience let me let me tell you something bro for 95 percent of the jobs that you're going to do your experience of 25 years isn't going to matter it only matters in that one to three percent of the difficult cases that nobody else can solve and then you can't give that away either you got to charge up the wazoo to solve those problems that the average company can't solve because they have a high turnover rate in your area. They're hiring people with no experience. They're training as crap and the guy has no experience. But for 95% of the time, when you're doing exterior perimeter treatments, sweeping webs, you don't need 25 years of experience for that. It's a, it's a, as a matter of fact, after two years of experience, it's of no advantage. When you're doing, if you're going to be doing difficult roach cleanouts where there's 100,000 roaches in that unit, it's a different matter. When you're going to be solving fly problem that nobody can figure out how the hell that fly is getting in the building, yeah, they're going to need you. That's where I come in, in my company. I don't get involved in 99% of the cases except the sales and the marketing. That's really... My goal right now is sales and marketing. That's all in admin of people and, and being a leader of people. But I'm not a manager. If I got to babysit your ass, I, you won't work for me. So it's harder for me to find people. But when I find that person, they make really good money. You know, my average tech is going to make twelve to $1,400 a week with me. But and he's going to work 40 hours a week and he's not going to work Saturdays. He's going to make money because I sell it for a very high price. And I have route density and I've already built it. And that takes years. That doesn't happen overnight. I'm not telling you that's easy that, oh, look how great I am. That took me a long while to figure out. So, you know, a lot of these people, uh, let's see here, Maria Sorrentino. I'm going to see Maria Sorrentino in April. I'm going to be up in, 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 um, that gone at this cigar. I love it. Um, you know, hey, Robert, how you doing, brother? Alan Fugler. If you don't know who Alan, I think it's Fugler. I don't think it's Fugler. I don't want to mess up your name, Alan. I, I've had you on the show before, but it's Fugler. Um, um, yeah, I can't wait. Me too. Um, it, it's going to be for the uh, the training, lead people, manage stuff. All right. So uh, I'm going to be up there for that. If you're looking at it, look it up online. It's going to be in uh Zoo, Michigan. Uh, it's right outside of another city where they're in. Uh, but look that up. Look at it up on um, Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite. Look up Lead People Manage Stuff. You'll find it. Um, I think it's like 600 bucks for two people um, for a couple to go up there, plus, you know, airplane and hotel and all that. But um, a lot of good people are going to be there. Alan um, Foyer is going to be there. Um, obviously, Marita is going to be there because it's at her facility. It's going to be pretty cool. 
Um, uh, Alan is a um, industry insurance giant. Uh, he's a legend in this industry. So if you've got any, any, uh, I've had him on there on the podcast. Um, let's see who else is on. I don't know who else is on. Uh, thanks for the shout out, my brother. <laughs> you got the name right. All right, thanks, brother. I always, you know, like Alan, Alan Fewer, a uh, foyer. It's, it's. I, I keep thinking it's fewer, but then we're gonna bring the fewer to the event, and that's not good. Uh, Paul Bellow's gonna be there too. If you guys wanna uh, get some termite training, Paul Bellow is gonna be there. Um, who else is gonna be there, Maria? Since you know who's gonna be there, um, um, Michelle Coy. She's by the way, Michelle Coy has got a uh, a training on basic accounting, basic business finance. If you're struggling to understand basic business finance and basic accounting, where the numbers should be, how you should be tracking this, and how you should be setting up chart of accounts and all that, I've got a course, ninety nine bucks for that course. Um, take it; it's going to be a uh, Laura. I, I and I keep forgetting Laura's last name because all she had was on the podcast was Laura. Um, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, Adam Mueller. I think I, that's Mueller. I think I know Mueller. That's Mueller. Um, all right. And so, yeah, man, shout out to all you folks that are out there. This is starting to get busy here. I think it's 6 o'clock. People are going to start showing up on a Wednesday night to buy cigars and, and join. So still waiting on Ermi to, to get out. Let me see. Do I got... Uh, uh no 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 so i don't know man um so much better uh to do these in the evening yeah i know but you know i go on it's recorded i got content you know i'm a content um you know slut <laughs> um so so you know there's there's i've got that it'll, it'll be on youtube it'll be on facebook recorded it'll be on there uh, I will, Eric will be going crazy now. He's got an hour and 22 minutes of content to sift through and get micro content from it and get shorts and get all this stuff for the next two months. So, you know, I really do it for the content. It's not really for you guys. Okay. It's for the content. I want the like shares. Um, you know, I, that's what I really am after is all the likes. I, I like the social acclamations, um, the love, um, you know, I'm, you know, that's really why I do it. Um, but no, I'm serious. It just, you know, if it helps you, it helps you. And it, and I hope it does. Um, I don't know who else, uh, anybody, if anybody got any questions, um, wish I, I need to go, I need to go light my cigar next time. I'm going to bring my own, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, people are coming on now too. By the way, people are walking into the store and they're coming online. Around, yeah, everybody's getting off of work. It's six o'clock in the evening. Uh, you're getting off of work. You're you're seeing this guy with a beard and headphones and a cigar and wondering what the hell is he talking about? Um, and you know, I mean, at least you'll you'll chime in for a second and go, oh, he's got nothing to say. I already know all this. And then and then and then scoot on out of here. But um, believe it or not, where I believe it or not, where I get the most activity. On lives, you would. This is where I, I tell people they're wrong all the time, especially you old guys, you old farts who are, are 60, 70 years old going, Oh, you don't be on TikTok. All you got is a bunch of little on TikTok. Yeah, but understand these little kids on TikTok. They're now teenagers. There's a lot of adults on TikTok and they're influencing their parents on what to buy at home. So when I have an eco friendly solution and they're in school going, It's all about the environment, it's all about eco friendly. And, and they're telling their parents, I saw this guy who smokes cigars and has a beer and he talks about eco friendly. And I think you should listen to him. That's where the influence comes in. And this is where people say, Well, 70 and uh, 60 and 70 year old people who buy houses don't are not on TikTok. Baloney grandmas are on TikTok because their grandchildren are watching TikTok. Um, and, and, and do you want to, and by the way, that market, that, that 50 to 70 is about 10% of that market. If you feel like ignoring 10% of your market, cause you don't want to be on a platform because the majority are kids fine. You know, you can SOL your, if you want to, uh, who am I to tell you what to do? But the reality is that now it, it's about the top 20% are in that 35 to 45% market. Do I want to alienate? and not cater to that market 
and put out content, which it's automated anyway. What the heck do I care? And not do it because, you know, I have a mentality that I'm selling only to 60 and 70 year olds that own houses. Um, millennials are starting to buy houses. They're starting to have kids. Millennials who are single are starting um, are starting to have pets and they don't want pesticides on their floor because they have pets. So stop thinking like your grandpa uh, and start thinking like these people who are who, by the way, are in college. I got a lady the other day says, I have my daughter living here with her kids and she want the pesticide in the home, can't buy pest control. That's what calling you because she won't have it. Because kids are living at home with their parents now because they can't go make it out on their own yet. At 28, they can't buy a house. They're living with their parents and they're telling their parents what they're going to do in their own house. So if you feel like alienating Instagram crowd and the TikTok crowd and whatever new platform comes on, I'm on, I'm going to be plastered on every platform that there is. I could care less about the demographics because that demographics will age. And do I want to be in it at the first sign of it and be the first one on it and have the most traffic when I'm trying to sell content? Yes, I want to be there. So, um, you know, uh, watch these things being kicked. Uh, <laughs> watching kids getting kicked in the nuts. <laughs> oh, that's funny as hell. <sighs> yeah, bro. I mean, you know, I, I, I have to talk to you guys. Understand, bro. I have no one to talk to about bugs at home. Um, Ermi doesn't want to hear it. I can't mention the two R words in my house. Uh, I'm not allowed to mention roaches or rats. Because she has a phobia with roaches. We're outside and anything flies, everything that flies to her is a roach. I tell her, no, that's a moth. No, that's a beetle. Oh, baloney, you're just telling me that. So I wouldn't freak out because, you know, I hate them. So, you know, I have no one to talk to about bugs. And my techs don't want to hear it. I mean, you know, they live it all day. Again, did Yeah, I did. My squirrel butt muted the damn microphone. But anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. I've been down here for an hour and a half. Unless you got any real questions for me. I mean, you guys are the entertainment here. I mean, you guys are making this fun as heck with all your comments. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, anything you need, uh, I'm here. You can reach out to me on Messenger. Everybody's dropping off like flies now. Um, everybody's got to make dinner. You know, at six o'clock, you got to be with your kids. I know you don't want to sit here and watch a 53 year old male talk about cigars and bugs when you, your kid is going, Dad, what's for dinner? We want to go out. Um, and wife is like, Hey, you've been out all day talking about bugs and now you're watching a video about bugs. There's something seriously wrong with you. So, hi guys. Nice talking to you. This is Frank, the pest geek, wishing you a spectacular evening. Long ashes to you. <laughs>